Hi, this is Kit. I'm doing a talking head video, which is something that I rarely do, but I wanted to talk about beekeeping a little bit. I'm about to show you how I installed my latest package of bees. This is my third installation into my top bar beehive. I unfortunately lost my hive because a queen was killed or was lost. Um, it's hard to know. I just know that um, when I went into the dead hive, I saw significant signs that they were trying to establish a new queen. However, it was October and you can't mate a queen in October where I live. So they were doomed when they lost their queen um, because a queen has to mate in order to be able to lay female eggs, which is of course the core of a beehive. So I installed a package that I picked up today. I got my package from a local beekeeping association. So I drove um, 40 minutes north of me to a distribution site and then drove home with my package of bees in the back of my minivan. Um, on the other occasions I've picked up my bees, I've actually picked them up in a, a Mini Cooper and I've just had the bee package on the floor of the passenger seat beside me. So it's something um, that is perfectly fine to do. It's perfectly safe. There's a little bit um, of bees on the outside of the package, usually clinging, um, trying to find their sisters. And they often just go the ride with you in the car. Um, sometimes they fly around so you can crack your windows and you know they fly out and they're gonna die, but you know it's better than them stinging you if you're afraid of that. So a package is a um, box, a screen box of bees that is yay big. From what I recall, it's about three pounds of bees, which equates to 3,000 worker bees. Um, in addition to those worker bees, there's a can of syrup, which is their food source for the transportation to the distribution site. And then it's their food source until you actually install them into your hive. So that's what's keeping them fed. In addition to that, sugar syrup is a caged queen. Now they have been transported with this queen, so they're, they're getting used to her smell. I have to say, you know, <laughs> getting these packages from another part of the country shipped to you and then you know coming in your car it's got to be very chaotic for these little creatures so I think when you install bees often they're just kind of in this numb state trying to get their bearings and understand their new situation so they're coming with a queen that they're getting used to the smell of um, when you install the package you can do a lot of different things with that queen. What I usually do is the like slow release method, which means I uncork one end, which literally has a cork in it. That's the escape route for the queen as a cork plug so that she doesn't escape. And I quickly take that out and I plug it with a marshmallow. And what that does is the bees will eat through the marshmallow slowly. They'll be getting used to the queen smell. And then by the time they've eaten through that marshmallow and she can come out, they'll have accepted her as her own, um, as their own queen. Um, because bees, if they're not used to a queen, they can kill her. Um, so sometimes a quick release of a queen, which basically means bloop, pop that queen right into the hive, where while you can get some quicker eggs that way, um, you're also risking the life of your queen. And sometimes it's unavoidable, I would guess. But for me, I've always done the slow release method. Now, I this is my third package that I've installed of bees. Um, I lost, you know, my hive as I as I shared because I lost my queen, unfortunately, in October. So I've been doing beekeeping for four years. Um, I still consider myself a new beekeeper. I feel like I'm learning things every day about beekeeping. And I wanted to share something that's been very helpful to me on my journey, which is this book, The Beekeeper's Handbook. Um, this has everything that I've ever wanted to know um, that I haven't wanted to necessarily watch a YouTube video for. Um, everything from just scientifically how bees work, how they're designed, the way that they work together, how they're fed, how they care for each other, males, females, and queen, and how they relate to each other, physical characteristics, um, social characteristics. Starts out with all that information, which is extremely interesting and a little bit terrifying. Um, if these bees were like bigger creatures, they would be um, very terrifying <laughs> with some of the ways that they manage their hive. Um, it takes you through how to find um, a package of bees, like where do you go to purchase one locally? How do you install that package of bees? Which there's a lot of different methods um, of doing that. And I'm using the shakeout method today. Um, it takes you through feeding them, 
um, caring for them with diseases, um, all kinds of things. It's been very helpful. It also comes um, and walks you through the products of the hive. So the different things besides honey that you can extract from your hive and their properties. So um, if you're interested in getting into beekeeping, that is a book that I highly recommend. Now, um, today, I'm, I'm going to be showing the video of how I did a shakeout release <laughs> and package installation into my top bar beehive. Um, a top bar beehive is not the typical hive that, that people start keeping bees in. It's even not even really a starter hive typically. It's people often will start with a conventional Langstroth hive. Um, I chose top bar beekeeping um, for a lot of reasons and I've quite enjoyed it. Um, I started to think about making a video or two last summer because the way that I keep my bees is different from most of like the hardcore beekeepers on YouTube. I wear a um, I wear full protection. I'm fully veiled, fully garmented in my bee suit. I wear gloves all the time. Um, I am not anaphylactic in my reactions, but I have a pretty strong reaction to bee venom and I don't like it. And initially when I was beekeeping, I, I kept those bees um, and I worked them without gloves and I really didn't get stung probably for several weeks. And then I did get stung. I had a pretty you know, moderate reaction. It was painful and itchy and just really uncomfortable. And after that, it triggered this animal instinct inside of me to, um, it's like a frightening, a, a frightful instinct. And I found myself just kind of reacting in like an animal fear state instead of being reasonable or rational. And I realized when I'm working my bees, if I do something stupid, that's just like an instinctive fear reaction, I could really hurt my bees. And so I decided I don't want to be afraid while I'm keeping my bees and I'm taking care of them. So I'm gonna wear gloves. So that's something that I do. And I just wanted to show you can do beekeeping and be fully protected. You don't have to be in there with the bees. Um, I really commend people that do that. I think that they probably have ado adapted to the venom because a bee sting is really not bad. Like it's just like a little prick. Um, I think that we get much worse injuries than a bee sting every day <laughs> in our life. But what is difficult with the bee sting is the venom that um, that goes in that causes pain and that causes response from your body, like allergic responses. So for that reason, I just have always, um, for these years, decided to wear full protection. Now, um, something else I wanted to share, I'm installing a package and the package I'm installing is all um, Italian worker bees with a carny, carniolan queen, carny is like the slang term and I believe it's pronounced carniolan. Um, this is like a variant of honeybee. It's not Italian, it's um, carniolan, carny bees. Uh, they have different genetic traits, which I'm, I'm kind of interested in seeing how they do in my hive, but um, I'm installing these Italian bees and they're taking in a carny queen and she's going to lay eggs that are carniolan eggs and so eventually all of these bees are going to become carniolan but in in the beginning it's all italian so it's just interesting and you can actually with photographs you can take photographs like when you go back into your hive after they've established themselves and physically like capture what those bees look like then go back in a month and take more pictures and when you compare the bees to each other, they're gonna look different because they're completely, you know, they've aged themselves out. Bees have a lifespan of like about four weeks in the summer. So <laughs> all of the, the original sisters will have died off and will be um, just working with our carny babies at that point. So what else do I wanna share? Um, if you are interested in beekeeping, it's a really fun hobby. It can be a little bit expensive but actually, I, I think it's reasonable for a hobby, especially something that is very challenging and a smidge terrifying and has a wonderful benefit of some fresh honey, raw honey from your own backyard. Um, something I like about top bar beekeeping is I can harvest, like kind of do micro harvests of honey and every harvest has a little bit of a different flavor. And I haven't gotten to that point where I can like document what flower, nectar, and pollen contributed to the flavor of like a particular um, bar of honeycomb. But maybe I'll get there in my beekeeping skills. It's kind of interesting though. So when I, I do my micro harvest, I, I harvest from one comb. I make sure that it's just in one separate jar um, and not in a combined jar. 
Um, so that part is kind of fun with keeping um, in a top bar bee, beehive. Um, I think that's all I wanted to share. You're going to see a video. I'm using the shakeout method, which I think is really the only method that you can install with top bar. You can't do like the long like walkout kind of method or anything like that. It's it's very different. Um, and I've you know successfully installed three packages. Um, the hive that I'm installing into, it's very well set up from the bees that unfortunately died in October. There's tons of pre-made wax. It's gonna smell great to these girls. So a lot of times when um, they tell you that you're going to install a new package that you should wait for evening, because if you install the package and shake your bees out, there's always, I guess, a chance of them absconding and just like leaving town and trying to find somewhere else to roost. And I guess that that chance is reduced if you install them in the evening. Um, I'm not worried about that this time because this hive has had bees, healthy bees in them that just happened to die because their queen died. Um, they're so set up. It's going to be a wonderful home for them. I know they're going to go straight into that comb and they're going to be really interested in um, developing, building their home in, in that comb, in that hive. All right, here we are with my installation of my package. You can see the bees here. There's a couple clinging on the outside like I explained just a moment ago, but inside the package is about three pounds of bees. You can see that clip is attached to the queen cage and that is the jar of syrup, I guess it's a can of syrup, that has been their food source. So I'm preparing my top bar to pour these bees out into. So I'm basically creating enough space in two locations so I can shake them into two parts of the hive so that they're not completely piled on each other because there's full comb on all of these bars which won't always be the case when you're installing a new package but since my this is the hive that my queen was killed in October in <laughs> you know they're they're pretty well set up so removing the can I had to use my hive tool to pry that out and I actually had to use my hive tool to pry out the queen cage as well. I'm doing everything in gloves. Again, as I shared, I just, I have a fear of being stung. My first year installing bees, I did not get stung once when I was dumping them out. Like they just really are pretty docile during this occasion. <laughs> so I'm pouring them in that middle brood section as well as toward the end, just so that they're not completely piled up over each other. See here you can see there's the package there's some of the bees that I poured out the others are actually right under <laughs> where the package is sitting this is a close-up of the queen cage so it's just this little simple box with screening so that the bees can feed her because she won't be able to feed herself even if you provide her with a food source the screen allows the bees to give her her food Now, I just continued to shake out a few more bees as I was able to. You're not able to get all of the bees out, even in the shake it out method. Um, but you can try to get as much as you can into the hive. And then I just put the package down with bees still inside next to the entrance, which will work. Now, here we go. I need to actually um, remove a cork plug from the queen cage because it's plugged with cork. And then I need to plug it with a marshmallow. This is that kind of slow release method where the bees eat out the marshmallow <laughs> so it removes the space and then the queen can emerge. The other way to do this is if you just kept the cork in and you left her in the cage and then you physically then after a couple days came in to allow her to emerge. That's another way to do it but this is a little bit easier because I don't have to come back to remove a cork. They'll eat the cork out. There you see it. So at this point, I grab an empty bar and I just use twist ties <laughs> to attach her to the empty bar. Simple as that. Probably could have done this without gloves because it wasn't super easy with gloves on. And I'm, of course, making sure that the screen is accessible. So do not put the screen toward the top of the top bar. Um, in fact, I have it kind of facing down in it would probably work if I did it sideways as well. So they have to have access to their queen. And there you see her. It's going to be very easy to identify the bar that she's on when I go back to check on her later. 
So at this point, everything is done. So it's just putting that hive back together and just being gentle about my top bars, making sure, trying not to squish bees to death. I left my can in like sort of propped sideways so they'll be able to eat out the rest of the sugar and I'm not feeding them otherwise because I have a lot of um, <laughs> the crystallized honey and and even dyed green sugar syrup that is from my previous beehive. So you can see here I just have the open package and everything is put back together. Got to make sure I get my hive tool. I have accidentally left that in the hive before. And at the moment, they're pretty docile. Like there's a few that are flying around. I have a lot that are clinging to my suit. So when I was leaving, I was trying to pick bees off and set them on the hive because they don't know where they are yet. They are not going to be able to figure out where home is aside from the smell of their sisters. That'll be the only way that they can navigate if they're not present on the hive right now. And I also have a water source. That's very important to start with. I have um, rocks in it so that they can not drown. <laughs> And this is actually the next day, this footage. So you can see they completely climbed out of the package and there's tons of bees coming around, um, flying around. So they're doing quite well. Cheers.